Hi there, my name is Eric Berman and I'm coming to you from my record room of 12,000 records. Today I want to talk to you about Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass and the album Whipped Cream and Other Delights. In fact, here's 151 copies of Whipped Cream and Other Delights and we'll talk about those later. But first a little background on who Herb Albert is. Herb Albert is a trumpet player. He started by putting a record together based on, on mariachi sounds that he heard when he went and watched Mexican bullfights. And he went to a Mexican bullfight and thought about what, and liked what he heard, and came up with an idea for a song called The Lonely Bull. Well, The Lonely Bull, which was from 1963, I believe, was a song that ultimately became a hit, and it was a self-released record. It was released on a label called A&M Records. The A was for Herb Alpert. The M was for Jerry Moss, his partner. They followed up with several other records, and the sound of the Tijuana Brass became a big thing in the 60s. Everybody was into this mariachi craze. The record ended up selling six million copies, in fact, and uh, was one of the biggest records of 1966, beating out records by the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Barbra Streisand, and many others on, high on the list. So who were the, the Tijuana Brass? Who were they? Were they even a group? They started out actually as a bunch of studio musicians backing Herb Alpert on the trumpet. It was the Wrecking Crew. Members of the Wrecking Crew are Hal Blaine on drums, Carol Kay on bass. We also had a guy named Leon Russell on piano. Leon Russell, of course, went on to become a rock star in his own right and a member of the Grease Band with uh, Joe Cocker and Mad Dogs and Englishmen. Eventually, the Tijuana Brass became big enough where a real band had to be put together. The members were John Paisano, who played the guitar, Bob Edmondson on trumpet, Nick Sorelli on drums, Pat Senator on bass, Tony Clash on trumpet, backing trumpet, Lou Paganini, who played the piano, and a guy named Julius Wechter, who played the vibes. Julius Wechter wrote some of the Tijuana Brass's biggest hits, in fact, and went on to form his own band on the A&M Records, which had big selling records in the 60s. That band was known as the Baja Marimba Band. Anyway, this album, the reason I have 151 copies of this album is because of its iconic album cover. This album cover launched the puberty for countless teenage boys throughout the 60s, maybe even the 70s. For all I know, it could still be doing it now. Anyway, Dolores Erickson is the name of the, uh, the uh, model on the cover. The cover was shot by the, the art director at A&M Records at the time, and uh, it was his idea to uh, put this record together. His name was... Peter Worf. Dolores Erickson, who was the model on the cover, uh, was pregnant at the time. She was three months pregnant. And no, she's not naked. She was coddled in, in white cotton, cotton kind of uh, fabric. She had a bikini on, which she lowered the straps under. And uh, the whipped cream on the cover, that wasn't whipped cream. That was shaving cream. If they had used regular whipped cream, it would have melted under the lights of the cam camera. However, there is some whipped cream on this cover. That is whipped cream on her head. And what she's touching her mouth, that's whipped cream as well. So that was real whipped cream. Anyway, so the record was a big hit. It had three singles on it. The singles were A Taste of Honey, Whipped Cream, and Lollipops and Roses. Two of those songs, Lollipops and Roses and Whipped Cream, were used on TV's The Dating Game as, as music. Another song that was used on The Dating Game was Spanish Flea from the follow-up album of Herb Alpert, which was Going Places, another huge seller in 1966. So let's talk a little bit more about the album cover. Iconic. What makes it iconic? Usually, when people start shooting their album covers and, and 
paying homage to an album, it becomes iconic. And I'm here to show you several of the iconic album covers that have come out in Whipped Cream and Other Delights Wake. These are just a few of them. There are, much, there are many more. Comedian Pat, Co Pat Cooper came out with Spaghetti Sauce and Other Delights. There was the Frivolous Five with Sour Cream and Other Delights. This is on the RCA Records label. This is a sealed copy, actually. I've never even played it. I have no idea what it sounds like. And then Rockers, Soul Asylum did Clam Dip and Other Delights. Now, what's great about the Clam Dip and Other Delights cover is they also paid homage to the back cover of the album. Here's the Herb Alpert. And there's the, uh, the, the Soul Asylum. Anyway, so why do I have 151 copies of this record? I'll tell you why. The record was one of the most purchased albums of the 60s. And when you go to garage sales, even today, the record turns up all the time. As a result, a friend of mine, uh, his name is Kent Rayhill. He lives in Hawaii. He started collecting these albums. They were, it was one of his favorite album covers, and he started collecting them, and friends of his uh, sent him copies. Kent Rahill was once in a band called TRS-80, a Chicago industrial band. You should look them up and listen to them. They were a wonderful group. They used a lot of, uh, a lot of visuals with their act. Anyway, so he started collecting these, and some of his friends, including Fred Schneider of the B-52s, sent him copies of these albums. Well, Kent got divorced and decided to move to Hawaii. So he came, asked me to come over to his house and asked me if I was interested in his collection of, of whipped cream and other delights. How can you say no to 151 copies of whipped cream and other delights? I find it amazing, and so I took him on. Fast forward a couple years, Herb Alpert came to town, and I went to see him. The format of the show was he, uh, he would play a few songs and then take questions from the audience. I took it upon myself during that performance to raise my hand and tell him that I had 151 copies of Whipped Cream and Other Delights. He laughed, the audience laughed. I thought it wasn't funny because it's a great thing. Nevertheless, after the show I waited around and sure enough they, they allowed the few of us who waited around to come backstage. I went backstage and I told Herb that I was the guy that has 151 copies of the album. He asked me, uh, what do I do with them and are they worth anything? I said, well, first of all, are they worth anything? I said, your record sold six million copies. That means there's six million plus copies out there these days. The record musically is, is invaluable. There, there, there's no price that can be put on the music. However, you could usually score a copy of this record for 25 to 50 cents at a garage sale, maybe even a dime. Anyway, so uh, the next day I went, uh, the next day he did a show at uh, another venue and friends of mine went to that show. And when he was doing his questions and answers, uh, he, somebody asked about the whipped cream album and he told the audience he met a guy last night who has 151 copies of the album. So, Herb Alpert was talking about me. Anyway, that's all we got for Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass Whipped Cream and Other Delights. This is Eric Berman with On the Record. Pick up your copy for 25 cents and give it a spin.